you could just please introduce yourself and uh, what company you're with or what school you're with. Uh, I'm Tyler Good. I'm a current senior at Greenland College of Art and Design and I worked at Volition for two months over the summer. Okay. Um, so when did you first realize that you were kind of morphing towards a tech artist or do you always go with the idea that this is what I want to do, I want to be a tech artist? Um, I kind of ha I had a scripting class in the sophomore year of my curriculum at Ringland and just kind of realized that I enjoyed doing that more than I enjoyed doing my content creation stuff and I had kind of, I was also really interested in lighting and actually last year when I came to the Game Developer Conference there was kind of a one-two punch of the first one would being uh, Bronwyn Grimes' talk about the shaders in Left 4 Dead 2 and that made that got me really excited it was like a beautiful kind of layout of the kind of the process that she went through and uh, that their, their shader team went through and then the next morning I went to the technical artist roundtable and when I came there I was about 90 percent sure I wanted to do lighting and when I left I there was not a thought of thought of that in my head it was just like I was I like the community I love the kind of the openness and also the just the focus on creative problem solving and, uh, you know, I, people, when I tell people what I want to do, what I did over the summer technical art, they, they, I always jokingly say, you know, when they ask, you know, invariably, what, 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 is, what is that? What do you do? It's always, you know, if you got a problem, yo, I solve it. So, it's, you know, but so Can you give an example is. of one of those, those problems that you solved? Um, I, th I think one of the, one of my favorite ones that I, that I did was, um, because I kind of had more ownership of it than anything else over the summer volition was the just the um, I think it was called the quick select isolate tool or something like that. They've got a, another version of it in Maya, but they have in Max they have something where you know they hit a hotkey and it just takes whatever you got selected and gets rid of all of it. And Volition's got its own proprietary, proprietary engine, so every tool that they have they have built. Um, and so there was something that just came across came across on the. Uh, list of things that needed done that was somebody had asked for a version of this in the world editor and it was just it was the first it was the first tool that I kind of got complete ownership over I'd been doing you know bug fixes on other people's tools and uh, doing some stuff like adding UI to add new features to people's tools but this was the first one that I really got to do like from start to finish you know it's like I got you know this is what they want I've got to design it kind of roll it out do a couple iterations on it and get it to where it's actually finished so it was just like this little tiny thing it's you know I think it was something commented it into being like 60 lines of code or something like that or 60 or 70 lines of code but it was just like it was such a great feeling to have that first like little bit of ownership on like you know there is this one little part of the workflow that I have now made a lot easier for you know this guy who ended up sharing with the rest of the team because he had been the person who was really pushing for it. That's awesome. So you're, you came in as an artist or a programmer, or were you always kind of straddling the line I, uh, with your training? Um, Training-wise, I came in kind of ill and I made the right decision for the wrong reasons. Uh, I think going to Ringling, because I um, I always tell people who are kind of like looking at like high school kids, because I give tours from my school, I always tell them, you know, don't get into games because you want to work on video games, you know. You don't get into comic books because you, you know, because you want to get into comic books. You do it because you like illustrating, you like drawing. You, don't, you shouldn't get into games because you really want to get into the games industry because that's not a job, that's not something that you don't do games. You might, you might design gameplay or you might design levels or you might you know, build model you know, environment stuff or model characters, but you don't ever, you don't just do games. And it's like I got into the school because I wanted to do games, which is, again, a bad decision, or I made the right decision eventually because I found that I, this is really what I really want to do, but I didn't do it for the right reasons at the time. But, so happy accident, I suppose. Um, but what I but I kind of found that I wasn't you know I wasn't quite adept, as adept at the content creation stuff as the people around me. But I really loved every time that there was something that I could make my process better. I kind of got to the level of everybody else, not by doing all of the work, but by figuring ways that I could shortcut my work so that I had more time to iterate back on my artistic work. So that was kind of something I started doing it without realizing that I could actually do this as sort of a support position as opposed to being the actual content creator, but it was a, I kind of kept my, kept afloat by by building tools for myself and, you know, kind of s supporting my own process. And then I had a scripting class in my sophomore year, uh, Robert Cooksey, who I think you may have talked with, and um, it was, like, just kind of eye-opening because he had um, just gone to his first game developers conference, um, and... 
think it was, it was the first or second, but he kind of met up with the tech artist people and found this weird little subculture community of people who were just helping each other and helping the people in their houses and just kind of kind of tapped me on the shoulder and pulled me aside. He's like, you should kind of look into this thing, gave me the techartist.org website, and uh, but really just kind of tapped me as somebody who I was much more interested in the support functions and in sort of the hows than the what's, I guess, would be okay. what the things that ex the problems that excited me was and what am I going to design or what is it going to look like or all those things so much as how can I make it so that I have the most time to do my or you know for me at school it was for me but you know eventually it'll hopefully be for the rest of my team how can I make it so that the content creators have the most time and can go through the spend the most time making art or making design as opposed to you know kind of struggling with the tools it sounds like most of this has been self-directed learning or also stuff that you've covered in your your coursework yeah it's it's sometimes actually been not not fighting it my professors have been supportive but also at the same time it's the you got to get your work done you got to get your work and there's, there are times when it's like just kind of and it's a failing, probably personally failing. That's just like I'll get started. It's like I've got this, you know, this little tool that I want to write that'll, you know, it'll save me 20 hours in the end. But I've got a, I've got a milestone that I need to hit for my thesis in half a week. And you know, tw 20, 20 hours out of you know the next month is great, but it doesn't help me in the, you know, in the next week sort of thing. Um, so, but yeah, it's been a lot of. Uh, I think my first language might have been JavaScript in like 1997. Doing like little web pages in my like on Angel Fire, but um, I had kind of just like always dabbled around. You know, picked up a little bit of Lisp, did a little bit of PHP. Um, I'd seen Python before, but I'd never used it. Uh, just kind of like a little bit here, a little bit there. They always always interested me. Uh, never really learned a whole lot because I didn't really have actual problems that needed solving. That okay. it was I was always you know never really had the thing. So I think Python was my first like really like language that I really really knew because it was. I was actually in a pipeline where I needed to solve problems, or it was to my benefit to solve problems. Um, okay. So, uh, but yeah, it was always just kind of like, there was one class with uh, Cooksey that I mentioned, the scripting for artists, but otherwise it was always kind of like, a, well, what can I do that I can kind of like give myself a project that's short enough that I'm not going to throw myself off track, but that's something I can bring back into my pipeline later. Okay. If there was one thing you could tell academics who are trying to start up a program about tech art, from your perspective as a student, what would that be? Um, this is something that probably never happened in any in any college uh, for a while, for a while. It'll take a lot of fighting, but I would love to see like at my in my program at an art school. Um, I kind of feel like you'd almost need to. You, it's not something that you bring people into as a you know you, they don't start in the tech art program. They, you know I think it would be almost something where it's like junior year probably you fork off from uh, the 3D art disciplines because it seems like. It's most advantageous to have sort of that that experience, and it's also something where um, it kind of seems to come as a, a sort of a personality trait of an artist. That it's not just necessarily it's like you know oh I really want to do this, but you, you start realizing that the artist loves solving problems. It's an art art is a problem solving sort of exercise. It's just a matter of which problems you start to find yourself gravitating towards, and. Um, Kind of something where it was, I mean, for me, it was an organic outgrowth, and it's like seems really for everybody. It's like they started somewhere else, and even the people who kind of want to be tech artists feel like they're. They, it's like it's not where they wanted to be at the beginning, but it's just like they always kind of wanted to do this thing, but just didn't realize it was there. But they kind of had to grow through this process. So um, I'd say either a if you if you want to start like a tech art program, something where you're you're targeting tech artists. I'd say don't target tech artists, find tech artists and allow them to kind of do that sort of thing. You know, give them the flexibility in your program because a tech artist without a team to support is, you know, is useless and, and there's, it's like the way to learn is to do and that's the, that's the approach that any good art school, any good 3D, you know, game art program is going to be teaching by doing and, you, and tech art's going to be the same way. You don't teach by, you don't teach them by sticking them in a classroom and teaching them Python out of a book. Or by just giving them a set of standard operations, it's like, well, you got to make a this to suit this to do this to do that. You know, it's not something it should be. You've got you know a team of artists who are working on their school projects, working on their theses, and then you get then you give the students, the people who are interested in tech art, you know, let be more lenient with them, let let them 
give them fewer projects on the artistic side. Um, you know, maybe they're still doing production, but just not as much. But make them live with what they make. So you know, if you make a tool, support it. That is, you know, grade them off of. You know, assuming you're giving grades and all that, grade them off of the tool that they write and how useful it is. Who's using it? How many people are using it? How they're evangelizing it? The documentation they write. Um, you know, the, how well they support it. Because you know, every every tool is broken the first time you write it. With the exception of probably the Hello World script, I don't think I've ever kept the first iteration of any script I've ever written, and I assume this is probably an experience that you know follows up along the people with you know, real real world experience that goes beyond two months. But you know, so you know, don't grade off of the first iteration. Grade off of how they kind of you know pile on that sort of those layers of excellence over top of that.